So it seems that the SQLite database, which has been around for almost 25 years, has been having a bit of a moment in the last year or two. It seems like every other podcast I listen to is talking about how SQLite is the super powerful embedded database and how uh, great it is to use. So I've never actually used it before, so I wanted to try and use it inside of a Lucy CFML application. That's a Cold Fusion application. And Lucy CFML has some features that makes this uh, much easier than than uh, Adobe Cold Fusion. But uh, to explore, I want to create a user management, well, a task management application where I can add users. So I can add Adam, Ben, Tim, Carol. These are my podcast co-hosts. And these users are going to be listed inside of a master database that manages the list of users. And if I jump over into my terminal here, and you can see I'm in a Cold Fusion SQLite folder, and I have in a databases folder. And now, if we list out the files here, you can see I have a master.db. Now, the thing that's nice about SQLite is that you don't have to have a SQL engine running in the background or on another process on another container. We just have the SQLite database driver code. And that does all of the database interaction itself. And my users are listed inside of this. Now, if I go into Atom, for example, and let's say 3D print some stuff. And then I go back here and I go into Ben and I say, walk the dog. Now I've added lists to two different users. And if we jump back into the terminal and we list again, we can see that I have the master database again, but now I have a user ID one and a user ID two SQLite database file. So as I'm interacting with the individual task lists, I'm actually creating on the fly new SQLite databases. And if I were to come in here and say delete Adam, and we go back here and we list again, you can see that now I only have user ID two, and that's because user ID one was Adam. I deleted him, which then deleted the list, which in turn deleted the actual SQLite database. And if we come in here and we add Carol, go for a jog, oh, job, whatever. We can toggle things on and off. Uh, I can come into here, Tim, and say, plant some peppers. And now if we come back here and let's list again, you can see now we have me, Carol, and Tim. Those are all being created on the fly. So let's take a look at how this is happening behind the scenes. So let's jump into, in order to set up this exploration, I had to create a Docker file because I needed to create a Lucy image that has the SQLite JDBC driver made available. Um, typically, when I'm using custom jar files, I actually just reference those in my application code. But because this is being used as a data source behind the scenes, I have to make it available to Lucy uh, implicitly. So I'm copying that JDBC file into the Lucy server bundles. Then I have my Docker compose. I'm going to build that Docker image. And then I'm going to mount my code here into the application. And I'm also going to mount my databases directory, which is what we were just looking at in the terminal. I'm going to mount that into another folder that's a sibling to the www folder. And this is just for security purposes. Uh, I mean, I know this is just an exploration, but I'm just trying to bake a little bit of goodness in here. Uh, for security purposes, we probably don't want to have our database files in the web accessible folder. So I'm putting it inside a non-web accessible folder called databases. And again, that's what we're seeing here, print working directory. We're in that databases folder. Now, in my application code, when we connect to a SQLite database, we actually have to provide the path to these individual database files in the database connection. So in order to facilitate that such that I can have a user and then or a master list of users and then individual user databases, what I'm going to do is create a cold fusion component that sort of encapsulates the uh, connection of the SQL light database driver to the physical file system in a way that my application code doesn't have to know too much about that. So what I did here is I created an abstract base component called SQLite DAO. DAO in this context stands for data access object. And you'll see that my constructor here takes a file name. This file name gets turned into a fully qualified physical file path. And then 
I create the data source definition here where I pass in the uh, class for the database driver and then the connection string points to the actual physical file. So I have JDBC SQLite that indicates that it's pulling from this database driver. And then here is the actual file path. Now you'll notice that I'm using expand path here for slash databases. Now, if we look back in the Docker compose, I'm actually mounting slash databases into this var www databases. And so in order to map this onto databases in my application CFC, I'm using a per application mapping. So this is the actual folder inside of the Docker container. And I'm saying when I use slash databases, I want to point to this folder. And that's what I'm doing here in terms of using the expand path. The expand path is telling ColdFusion, take this mapping expand it to point to that var www databases folder. And I'm just doing this so that my code here doesn't really have to know where those databases are stored on disk. I'm deferring that to the application CFC. This keeps the code a little bit more decoupled from the actual implementation details behind the scenes. Now I'm creating this data sources object. And this is where we're using something that's very Lucy CFML specific. At least I think it's only in Lucy CFML. I don't think Adobe ColdFusion allows us to do this. Um, in Lucy CFML, we can take this data source structure and we can actually pass it directly to the CF query tag. Now, the SQLite DAO, that's an abstract base component. So I need a DAO that's meant for managing the list of users and then a DAO that's meant for managing the list of tasks for a specific user. And what we'll see, and we can just look at any one of either one of these, is that I'm extending that SQLite DAO. I'm calling the super constructor to pass in the file name. So I have to pass in that master DB to say, hey, this is for this particular SQLite physical file. And then that is going to behind the scenes create that data sources object, right? This one with the class and the connection string. I can then take that data sources object, and when I'm calling my CF query tag, I can actually pass that structure in as the data source attribute. Historically, when we pass a data source here, it's a string that is the name of a data source that's been defined elsewhere. But in Lucy CFML, we can actually pass in that structure. And what Lucy CFML is going to do behind the scenes is it's actually going to create a data source connection on the fly, which to be very clear is probably not a great idea in a production context, but this is just an exploration. It's a way to explore the space. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this. It's probably not great to be constantly creating new database connections. They're actually under, under the hood. They're all called underscore, underscore, temp, underscore, underscore. I don't know what that means in terms of you know, thread safety and throughput and concurrency and all that jazz. So again, just keep in mind that this is a fun exploration and this is something that Lucy CFML actually makes quite easy. Uh, we're we're going to be able to pass those on the fly data sources and we can run regular SQL or I should say SQL light SQL. And just by doing this, the database driver behind the scenes is creating that physical .db file. Um, I won't go through the code here. You can see this in the, in the code and um in the repository. Um, but what I will say is that, this, so this is the master DAO, that's for managing this list of users. And then when we jump into a specific user and we're creating tasks, those tasks are being stored into that user specific database file. And that is being created and managed by this user DAO. Now the user DAO just accepts a user ID. And again, I'm just trying to create some layers of abstraction here, but we're not so tightly coupled to all the file names, but it does have to turn around and call that super constructor passing in the physical file name for the SQLite database. So you can see we're creating a dynamic file name here, user ID .db, And that's where we're getting these values. That is again, going to create that data source structure. And then all of the CRUD operations here in my CF query tags for this particular user, again, pass in that structure as the data source to every CF query tag, which means that every instance of this component for this specific user ID operates on a completely independent SQLite database, right? So if we look at the web application here, you can see when I go to Ben, I'm using user ID two, which is going to create, um, I can show you the code for this quickly. If we look at the top of the tasks page, so I'm taking user ID as the URL parameter. And once I've validated that this user exists in the master list, 
I go ahead and create a new user data access object specific to this user ID. So every time you enter a task page, I'm instantiating a unique user ID for the unique user, which creates a unique on the fly data source, which allows all of the CF query tags in this user DO instance to operate on a specific user SQLite database, right? So again, user ID here is two. If we go to Carol, we can see her user ID is four. So as we operate uh, on, the, on this task list, we're operating on a specific instance of the user DAO, which is operating on a specific SQLite database. Pretty cool stuff. Um, we can see here just, again, so Carol is user ID four, and we can see her database there, user ID four. If we go back to the users here and we just delete Carol, and then we come back here and let's list it again, you can see that that user ID four is gone. So um, I don't know how relevant SQLite is for a cold fusion web application, since uh, it seems to be this is more about embedding databases and applications that are user specific. Uh, cold fusion web application is really user specific. It's meant as a multi-tenant context uh, normally, but definitely just fun to explore the space here and, uh, and, and get a sense of all the SQLite stuff that people have been talking about. And it's great to see that at least in a Lucy CFML context, there's some stuff here that makes this relatively easy to play with. If I were going to do this in some sort of a production grade context, probably uh, instead of you know creating this on the fly data source, I'd probably want to do something where I'm actually programmatically using the Cold Fusion Administrator API to dynamically create new data sources and then just reference them by name in my CF query tags instead of by structure. Uh, that would, of course, make this compatible with Adobe Cold Fusion as well, presuming that the JDBC driver works the same there, which I assume it would. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've never used SQLite before, so don't expect any best practices here. This is just a fun exploration, but uh, uh, I don't know. I had a lot of fun and, and it was easier than I thought it would be.